hello and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys can hear me clearly um actually i was going to film um with this lovely camera but i actually ran out of battery and i was like you know what even my phone right now is running low on battery like anyways <laughs> subscribe to my channel i hope you guys are enjoying my videos i'm enjoying making them for you so i hope you're enjoying watching them um please if you don't follow me follow me on instagram at leathern taco and uh, hopefully i will do this weekly and post for you guys i have seen a video on um, social media that's going viral is about um, two french doctors who were discussing um, the possibility of um, testing Covid 19 um, vaccine in Africa. Si je peux être provocateur, est-ce qu'on ne devrait pas faire cette étude en Afrique où il n'y a pas de masque, pas de traitement, pas de réanimation, un peu comme c'est fait d'ailleurs pour certains certaines études dans le SIDA ou chez les prostituées, on essaye des choses parce qu'on sait qu'elles font, elles sont hautement exposées et elles se protègent pas. Est-ce que qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Alors vous avez raison euh, et d'ailleurs on est en train de réfléchir en parallèle à une étude en Afrique justement pour euh, pour faire ce même type d'approche avec le BCG, un placebo. Euh, je pense qu'il y a un appel d'offres qui est sorti ou va sortir et je pense qu'on va en effet euh, euh, sérieusement réfléchir. It made me think because the reaction was a bit overwhelming. People were just like, oh my God, no way, how dare you There aren't many cases in Africa, so if you're going to do a vaccine or if you want to test or you want to try, why don't you try it in the continent that that virus is quite big at the moment, you know? And I understand what pe where people are coming from, but I just quickly just want to say, like, his in history, like, African leaders messed us up. They allowed um, researchers or scientists or just Africa in general to be exploited because we have natural resources. We are, in my opinion, uh, capable of running things, do you know what I mean? But it's really sad that every time a decision is made in Africa, most of it is made in European cities. And it's 2020. Change things. This is not new, um, but hopefully this will start a discussion of how people um, in Africa should have their own researchers, their own um, vaccine and just their own things in general and not rely on others to always sort um, things out. That's just my personal opinion. But also it's just historically leaders put us in these predicaments. I will not be surprised. They probably took the money and there's a vaccine happening right now. It's, it's probably already happening. So it's sad, but it does actually start a conversation and it makes you think, um, of how the world moves and how people think of Africa, you know, even when when COVID-19 was like kind of um, traveling into different countries, some countries couldn't comprehend why it was not happening in Africa. Like, how cruel can you be? Can you not give Africans a break? Like, we've we've had enough issues, enough diseases, enough problems. And, and this one time that this virus is not coming from Africa, it's just like, you're trying to include us into everything. Do you know what I mean? What, what are you doing? Move. We're hassed, y'all, you know? We're not going to be in a Kale Ulhe Sinin. In a Ula Jawane Rawan. Sorry, the, the Somali in me just came out. Um, but yeah, just in general, how are you guys coping with everything? I have kind of like accepted our new reality. Uh, my prayers are with uh, a lot of people. Also, I've noticed like in my community, like in the Somali community, um, we haven't, at the beginning, we haven't actually taken the virus very seriously and it's hitting home right now. And uh, please just listen to 
listen to all the guidelines and make sure that if you do have elderly people at home don't travel around unless you have to even if it's not for you and you feel like you're healthy and you're fit nothing is going to happen to you then think of the elderly people who are more vulnerable and um, please please just stay at home and look let's look after our elderly people and people who are vulnerable and um, hopefully when this virus goes away we can discuss of how we should listen to each other more. most of most of the time it was very difficult to, to tell somali parents to like do social distancing or social uh, self isolate and literally they didn't take this virus seriously like not all but most of the time we just didn't listen like it's just a cultural thing like you know it's like i wouldn't say it's kibir it's more of a like they've experienced so many things in life for them they just don't understand why why this is a big deal do you know what i mean so i don't know about you guys and i don't know how your parents reacted my mom was just like like move away from me you know but i think it's true you know and hopefully after this we can have a conversation of how we should listen to each other and i think as a second generation it could be very difficult sometimes to inform or educate your parents because it's like <laughs> two different world but please be sympathetic don't be um um disrespectful when you're trying to deliver your message and and just you know explain and educate in a way that is not condescend condescending that's it <laughs> in a way that's not condescending um so yeah like i hope you guys are all well i'm sending you my love and um have a good day actually bye